Grab a block, whatever support you have to sit on top of. Whichever way you choose to sit, use your hands to manually adjust your own position. Roll your tush out and under. And then take your hands and give them a little bit of an inner spiral, an inner rotation. And let your hands rest where it's very naturally comfy. And take a few rolls of the shoulders up, back, and down behind the heart center. And then roll them in the opposite direction. Inhale, sweep the arms skyward. And exhale, bring your hands to your heart. So we'll just begin with a little bit of moving meditation to help center the mind. Inhale, prayer up. Exhale, send the arms down and out. Inhale, sweep up for that length through the sides of the body. Exhale, hands to the heart. Inhale, prayer to the sky. Exhale, fan the arms down and out wide. A few more times, just moving the arms, the hands, as you refine the alignment of your seat. Perch right atop those sit bones, the base of the pelvis, draw straight down to the earth. Crown of the head lift up to the sky. Inhale from the root to the crown. Exhale from the crown to the root. Okay, one more full set and move just the arms. Just notice if this movement is helping to settle your mental and your energy body a bit. So that now you may sit and find some stillness. Start to immediately tone the back of your throat for ujjayi breath, oceanic, victoriously uprising breath, victoriously uprising, meaning that it's coming from deep within you, the base of the pelvis, the boiler room of the house, where you generate your heat, where you start your breath. Feel that uprising of energy as you inhale. Take it in, you expand out three-dimensionally. Exhale, soften. Let go, release. Trace the breath as it flows through you. Just allow your awareness to distill itself down to this point, here and now, present moment, mind, body, breath. Find a little more space and length from that right hip up to the left shoulder. Left hip up to the right shoulder. Let breath across your collarbones. Now cross reference from your right shoulder to your upper outer left eye. And your left shoulder to your upper outer right eye. Mm -hmm. 
Feel yourself on your central spit. Couple more deep breaths. Inhale, send your arms out to the sides. Turn your palms upwards. And take your fingertips into your shoulders with your elbows out wide. Stay nice and lifted through the sternum. Inhale, twist yourself to the right. Exhale, twist yourself to the left. Right and left. Keeping your pelvis fully grounded on the clock face, which means your right hip's at three, your left hip is at nine, your pubic bone's going forward to 12, and your coccyx is going back to six. Once you feel more fluent with this twisting motion, whip it up, speed it up. And when you exhale, really let it travel out through the nose so you get a little bit of sound like this. So we'll pause on the ujjayi breath for a little moment. We'll work this more kundalini, kapalabhati style breath as we twist. It doesn't have to be a huge twist. It can be rather small. So you can whip it up, find some speed. Turn on the electricity in the house. Sweep the arms all the way up. And exhale, twist to the right to hold. Bring your hands down to make contact with yourself on the outside of the right thigh. And behind you at the sacrum. Keep the chin level to the floor. And ball around the central spit. Maintain your left hip plugged back at nine o'clock. Inhale, unwind into a little counter twist. And come back to center. To complete the other half, inhale, send the arms out to the sides. And then draw your fingertips to your shoulders. Keep that nice tall seat. So now you inhale to the left and you exhale to the right. So allow yourself a little bit of time just to get comfortable with this. Make sure you feel a nice toning in the core, which is really supporting and protecting your spine as you twist. Make that sound on your exhale. Let it travel out the nose with a good emphasis as you pump your belly in.
about 20 more, so keep going. down and we'll inhale reach it up and exhale twist your spine to the left make contact with yourself and really help use that contact to help you really feel where your central channel is in your body and notice that your heart stays centered as well between the back and the front head right on top of the spine Right hip plugged back to three o'clock. Another two. Inhale, unwind and counter twist. Come back to center and shift from your seat. Make your way to a tabletop. So two things to measure in table to make sure you've got nice right angles going to start. Also that you have the appropriate amount of distance between your knees and your hands. So turn one foot in, line the heel up with the center of the inner arch of the opposite foot, and then just take a look at that boundary, that length you created there with the measurement of your foot. And that's going to reflect your hips width distance. So once you come back to the table, make sure you're there in hips width. And then turn your hands in to meet the tips of the middle fingers. There's your shoulder width distance. And then a few ways to know that you're keeping the right angles as you add on to this is to incorporate some blocks. Flush with your thigh. And with your forearm. Now if you have four blocks you could use all four but I'm assuming you probably don't have that many so just go one for each. And then you'll really be able to feel if you're shifting too far forward or too far back you'll lose contact while you tip the block over. So maintain that position in your table. Let's go for a full breath here just feeling the core engage, the collarbones broaden. And inhale, round your back up to cat. And exhale, arch it into cow. Inhale, round up cat. Exhale, hammock the belly down cow. And just continue that on your own for a few more cycles. <laughs> cool. Couple more. Neutral spine. So shift both your blocks forward. And let's set them up at the forearms, like I'm showing here on this front side, in a plank pose. So you're going to keep this nice stack. Again, you might want to just measure yourself out once you come in. Turn it in, tip the middle fingers to me so you know you've got the proper width still after you shift it. You still got a nice contact forearms to those blocks. Right angles at the wrist. Shift your knees back. Modify for more support. Toes tucked. Knees elevated for more fire. 
Have your heels over the balls of your feet if you're in the full high plank. And then again, draw your tailbone back to six and your cubic bone forward to 12. Press into the inner wrist point, cross reference that to the base knuckle of your pinky, fourth finger. Outer wrist to the base of the thumb and the index. Center the wrist to the middle finger, base knuckle joint. Push, push, push until your shoulder blades protract, spread apart. Here for a few more deep breaths. If you still have contact with your blocks. Squeeze those thighs to help elevate the femurs, to keep nice buoyancy in the pelvis. Last breath. Release it down so you can move the blocks. Woo! Take it into downward dog so you can maintain that same length of a stance from plank. Back to dog, maybe you've improved it a few times so you know you're in the right place with your hands and your feet. Plank to dog. And I feel like I lost my hips with back there, so I'm gonna turn one foot in again, measure it out. And that's the outer boundary for hip width. Soften the knees so you have no wrinkles on the fronts of the ankles. Notice how your weight's on the balls of your feet. Similarly, feel it in the balls of your hands. Soften your fingertips off the mat. Even try floating them up a little bit. And lift your tail. Soften your belly and your heart back. Wrap the inner thighs back around your thigh bones. And then spiral your armpits in towards your heart center without losing that main root of the base of the thumb and the index finger. A couple more deep breaths. Just refining your pose. Keeping the upper arm bones framing the ear so the head is on top of the central spit of the body. the connection between your pelvis and your ribs. And lower to your knees in child's pose, big toes together. Targeting some triceps and lats from here. I'm going to use your blocks as well, make it um, more effective and maybe even a little bit more intense, which might feel nice for some of you. Um, if you don't have blocks, you can just do it on the mat, no biggie. So put your elbows up on the blocks with your hands in a prayer. Have enough space for your head in the middle. And then as you start to melt your heart and your head back down, your prayer draws up, back, and then you want to actually have this sensation of dragging your elbows down and back on the blocks. And that's what's going to really help you feel like you're tapping in to the triceps, the lats, a little deeper into the shoulders. dog. Inhale, stretch the right leg up to three leg dog. And 
for some fun here. Let's do a little cross lateral balancing. Take your gaze forward. Soften into your left knee. Soften into your right elbow a little bit. And come onto the fingertips of your left hand. Maybe you stay right here. Maybe you turn the thumb side of the hand upward. Or maybe you completely lift up and off the mat. So it's a line from your left fingertips up through your right heel. And that vacuuming of energy through the center of your right palm into your armpit. One more breath. Place that left hand down. Exhale, step it through to a lunge. Ground the back knee. Flip your right hand so the wrist lines up with the heel on the outside. Notice, feel, see that natural fit in your body. Heel to knee, wrist to shoulder. I know you can't see it as well on this side, but you'll see it better on the left side when we get there. Grab a block from the tall setting, tilt it back and slide it under your back thigh. Especially, especially, especially if you are a flexible type of body, use this block. Come on up. And accelerate your weight forward into the ball of your front foot. Maybe so much that you could put on a high heel shoe while keeping your hips on the clock face. A couple more breaths right here. Welcome to keep the lift of the front heel. Inhale, send the arms all the way up. Take your left wrist and cross it over your right, over your head. And now spin your hands inward so your palms can connect. You're in this kind of like twisted at the wrist prayer. That contact with your hands is going to help you to engage, to plug into the center line. From the base of the pelvis all the way up to the top of the head. Use that awareness, and that connection you have with yourself to inhale, lift, to exhale, up, over, and back. A few more breaths. Release your front heel, open up your hands. Exhale, bring it down. And release the block. Inhale, take it back to a plank pose with your right leg lifted. Remember, you can always be right here modified with the left knee grounded. So same thing as we just did in three-leg dog. And bring your left fingertips forward. Or thumb up. Or all the way up. Press down and in between your right hand and your left foot, left knee. Two more breaths. And then back to three-legged dog. Inhale. Bend the knee, roll the hip open. One more breath. And release back to downward dog. Come to table. 
Let's incorporate those blocks again, but this time with flipped wrists. One for the forearm, one for the thigh. So are you maintaining your measurements? And you're maintaining that contact with the blocks. Inhale, round, exhale, arch. Just notice what's feeling particularly sticky today. heavy earthbound energy in your standing right leg, the length of your outer right hip. Keep all of that. Shift your gaze forward. Come on to your right fingertips. So this could be where you stay. Or take your thumb up. Or fully lift. Reach. Make sure you feel a nice micro bend in that left elbow. When you're ready, step it through lunge. Flip your left wrist, line it up with the outer heel. Find that natural fit in your body. Put your hips on the clock, and they're going to stay on the clock. Incorporate a block under your back thigh. Inhale, rise up. Now your right wrist is crossing in front. Turn the hands in, connect the palms in your prayer. Can you continue to feel that center of both palms? That energy lifting up. Whereas you can feel the cross-reference point connections. Inner wrist, face the pinky fourth finger. Outer wrist, face of the thumb index. Center of the wrist, face of the middle finger. Put on the high heel shoe. Anchor into the big left toe ball mount. So you really keep your knee in line with your ankle, in line with your hip. Find that lift. Take it into a backward bend. So you can really prime your front body. And move ahead. Backward bends rather than taking us into the past. They help us see what's in the future. Two more breaths. Gently come out. to find that one-legged plank pose. Cross lateral balance. So this cross referencing is gonna really help. Feel it from your right hip to your left shoulder. Come on to the fingertips, or thumb up, 
or full extension. Remember, you can always put your right knee down to modify to support. Inhale, three-legged dog. Bend the knee, roll the hip. That one is always sneaky challenging. We come back to dog. One more breath. Come to the middle of your mat and standing forward bend. Bend your knees enough that you can soften your belly to your thighs. And take the bend from the hip joints rather than from the lower back. So right here at your hips is that first fold of your body. We fold in half. So make sure you're not pulling or straining your back or your hamstring insertion points up in your butt by really bending the knees. You can feel a nice balance of weight in your feet from the heels forward to the balls and then right at the center of the inner arches. Relax your toes just like in your down dog. No need to uh, grip the mat or like claw at the mat. You can really let your fingertips and your toes just kind of like secondary. When you need a little extra, it's there, but you're not hypertensing those digits. Use your, you know, your main bones, joints, and muscle groups to do that heavy lifting. Another couple deep breaths here, just to simply hang with gravity. On your next inhale, take a halfway lift. Lengthen the spine forward from your hips all the way out through your head. And you can either slide your hands up your shins or use your blocks underneath your shoulders, which I prefer to use just because I have a bit of a longer body and it helps me feel like I'm more fully in that half lift position. Might be the same for you, might not. So feel it out and exhale, release. Couple more, inhale, half lift. More weight into the balls of the feet as you move forward in space. Exhale, fold without sinking into the heels. One more time, inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward bend. From here, take your left arm on top of your right, hold the outsides of the legs. And then pull your head through your arms as your elbows go out. Your inner thighs rotate back. Release. Take the hands behind the back to the sacrum. Have your left thumb on the outside and inhale a half lift. Exhale, fold arms over. Keep the interlace of the hands as you bend your knees and start to slowly roll up. And then with your hands at your sacrum there, feel that action of your tail going to six, your pubic bone going forward to 12. Inhale, lift the sternum, plug the elbows and shoulders behind you. Exhale, up over and back. 
So just like when you were in the lunge, emulate that here without locking out the knees. And if you feel it might serve you to go deeper, you can invite those hands to release further down and back behind you. You can keep space, or you can make contact with yourself. And use that to inform where you want to go. A couple more breaths. Inhale, rise. Exhale, release the hands and take a full body breath. Bend the knees, inhale, sit into chair pose. Inhale, arms all the way up. Catch opposite elbows overhead. A mental note for which forearms and fronts, you know which side is the other side when we switch. Sit, 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 and lift up, up, up with those elbows. Get some more of your weight into the balls of your feet as you continue to sit back into that crease of your hips. One more. Now pull it forward, forward, forward until you come parallel with the mat. Keep pulling those elbows forward. Imagine that I was helping you pull your forearms up and then soften your mid back down. Stick the booty out. One more breath. Exhale, release it all the way down. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Cross your right arm over your left. Hold the outsides of the opposite legs or ankles. Pull your head through. From that outer right hip, trace to the left sit bone, and from the outer left hip, trace over to the right sit bone. One more breath. Inhale, lengthen to half lift, taking the hands behind you, right thumb on the outside. Exhale, fold. Keep that interlace as you inhale, roll up. Oriented first into Dasana. And then feel that action behind you. Cock six to six, pubic bone forward to 12. Which means you're not over tucking your tailbone, right? You're not a scared dog. And you're also not letting it hang out too much behind you. So you don't want to dump and crunch here in the lower back. So find that nice happy medium where you feel lifted and supported. Big inhale. Exhale, go back. And you really only go so far back as your breath can stay with you, that you can feel grounded in your body, especially in your lower half. Where your hands can lay down and back behind you. Where you can make contact with yourself. You can actually make contact with the upper inner thighs and then squeezing in to the hands a bit. So I'm really making sure I have that nice inner spiral going in the legs. Take another two. Inhale up. Let 
let that go. Take a breath. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is, um, it's pretty fun and it's kind of wild. So if you don't get it the first time, don't give up, right? Sorry, Instagram, I know you're there. Just try it a few and, and see what you learn along the way. And um, nobody's butt is too big for this, okay? And I should know for sure. <laughs> I'm not saying I've got a big butt, but I've got a bubble butt. So, you know, if I can do this, I'm sure you can probably do this too. If you have a strap, you can use it. But if you can maintain the interlace of your hands, we'll do that instead. Okay? So if we start from that standing forward fold position. Start to bend your knees into a squat. Release the grip a bit of your palms so your hands are going to open up in that bind a little bit enough that you can take them back and lower and then back up and over Ugh, as you stand. So we're just going to do that a few times. If you get stuck, like right here, what do you got to do to negotiate? Maybe there's a little bit of a, like a wiggling action that happens. <laughs> and if you're smiling, if you're laughing, good. Because there are wonderful elements to infuse into your practice. You're just not taking yourself too seriously, right? Inhale, halfway lift. Otherwise, what really is the point? What are we doing here? <laughs> if it's overly serious. Exhale, fold. Okay, now let's add an element to this. So you're going to bring your feet together all the way. Big toes touch. So now that when you get your bind over your butt and down towards your feet, you're going to have an opportunity to step on your interlaced hands with your heels and make some extra contact with yourself. So let's have the opposite thumb on the outside, whatever you just did. And then come down. Ooh, maybe it's a little easier now that you brought your feet all the way together. Maybe? <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> I know in my body, I usually have more success getting around myself when I get low in the squat. So look at that. We have a little bit more success getting around ourselves when we get low, when we are humble, when we check that ego, but when we still work with our confidence and our openness to try. One more. Release. Open your feet back up to hip width. And remember that's two fists measured out center of the inner arches. Make your way to downward dog. Inhale, lift the right leg up. Exhale, step it through. Again, flip the right wrist and line it up with your outer heel just so you know you're really in line with yourself. It takes that constant checking in, measuring up. Aligning to something greater than your own personal narrative. All right, now take this flipped wrist and put it on the inside of your front heel. Keep your hips on the clock. 
Draw your front right knee into your shoulder. Inhale, start to open, twist to the left. Reach your top left arm up. And keep that outer left hip rolling down to nine. One more breath. Slowly come out of that. And we're going to add on to this. So first, shift your back foot to about 60, maybe 45 to 60 degrees, and move it wider towards the long left side of your mat. You can keep this flipped right wrist here or draw it further down. And then keep pressing that front knee in. Continue to accelerate your weight into the ball of your front foot. Spin this outer left hip down. Keep it at nine. Inhale again. Twist open. And then reach your top arm. Straight up or over like you would in your extended side angle pose. Spinning that inner left thigh down and back. Cross-reference the points in your bottom right hand. Draw the right knee into the right shoulder. Another two. And then release, come on out. Take your blocks with you if you have them to pivot to your left to a wide stance. I don't know why my music volume keeps changing. Whoa. Okay, I swear those Bluetooth speakers are the minds of their own. Okay, inner thighs back. Walk your blocks forward to you nice and long. To fold forwards, keeping the hips aligned with the heels. Inhale, lengthen, walk your blocks over to the left, about 10 o'clock or so. Getting a nice right side body stretch. Inhale through center, 12. Over to the right, two. Keep your hips otherwise on the clock. And then inhale back to 12. Pivot, pivot, pivot. All the way to come back to a down dog left leg high. Exhale, step it through. Flip your left wrist inside of the heel. Keep your right hip spin down to three o'clock. Outside of the left hip stays long. Inhale, start to open up and twist to the right. Spiral that top armpit into the heart so your thumb is going back. Pinky finger forward. A little more weight into the ball of the front foot. Find that center line and twist into it rather than away. Two 
two more breaths. And release. So you can set it up for the side angle variation. Back heel grounds down. Use your right hand to help reinforce that right hip into its own lane on the mat. And then bring your bottom hand a little further back as that serves you. To really feel your front left knee pressing into your bottom left shoulder. And that's going to help you stay into that midline as you revolve. You twist back open. Not from the hip, but from the waist. And then reach your top arm. And my wall is kind of in my way. But I'm making contact with it just to, again, inform where I am in space. And get a little better aligned. Inner right thigh down and back. Let that heart sing out. That heart's always looking up and out to the right. What's out there for me? Two more. Release back to center. Wide angle stance. Giving lots of nice volume in the upper body with the arms outstretched like this. So it feels like a really wide legged like down dog with most all your weight in the feet. I'm just going to let you be there for another few breaths. Oh my goodness, Instagram. I gotta restart you guys because I'm gonna lose you. So please restart with me. Facebook, how you doing over there? Okay, see you on the next live stream. Hello. There we go. Cool. So, where are we? Wide legged forward fold. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay. Oh my goodness, it's already been about an hour. Now find your length. Bring your blocks, your hands under your shoulders, and then turn your heels in and your toes out. Bend the knees. Inhale, rise and reach the arms up. Exhale, wrap your left arm underneath your right. For either Opposite shoulders or full wrap twist, eagle wings. Now take your elbows up and over to your left side. And then lift your chin a little bit and send your gaze off to the right. Stay deep in those roots. Okay, let's find a little bit of movement here in the arms. It's just a little back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, back, forth. And you can incorporate that breath again like we did in the first twist. It's a little bit peppier, a little bit faster. Last 10. Hold. 
Lift it all up so you make contact with your chin. Inhale, bring it to center. Release the arms and stretch the legs as you inhale. Exhale, come back down. Left arm under. Did we already do that side? I meant right. And then take your elbows off to the right. Gaze a little bit up and off to the left. Relax any gripping in your toes. Plug into those big toe ball mounts with a nice lift of the arches of the feet. And then work your breath going side to side with those arms. And one hold. Make contact with your chin. And then come back to center. Inhale, reach it up. Exhale, bring your arms down, bring your feet in. And exhale, fold forward. Take an inhale to halfway lift. Exhale, make your way into child's pose or downward facing dog. And we're going to pretty much go right into our peak pose from here. So give yourself a little moment to prep for it. Just going to turn some music back on. started our class with the cross lateral balancing of the cross referencing like when you do a hip to an opposite side shoulder or a leg to an opposite side arm we're gonna work back into that now so if you come from your dog make sure your dog is not too long yeah it's about a 60 degree angle or so at the hips so let's start by lifting the right leg inhale extend and send your case forward plug into the right hand really strong don't lose that main root of your inner wrist thumb and index finger pad come on to your left fingertips so this can be your safe landing place Rather than toppling over, maybe just come to here if you feel like you're going to lose your balance. And then by all means, if you lose your balance, all good. That's a great way to learn where your center is. Bend your right knee. Lift up off of your left fingertips. Or if you feel so inclined, reach it back. See if you can catch a hold. Hand to sacrum or hand to foot. Woo. Haven't done this pose in a while. Woo. Find that center line. Keep your hips on the clock. Woo! How'd that go? Ah. Want to take a break? Try the other side? So there's really so much going on here to really hold this all together. But when I say cross lateral balancing, you're supposed to keep that cross referencing in mind. So you're really traversing the central plumb line of the body as you go from one side to the other. So now we're lifting left leg, inhale. And 
nice and heavy on the ball of that right foot. Soften the left elbow a bit. Plug into that inner wrist point. Pat of the thumb and the index finger. Come up on your right fingertips. Bend your left knee. And right hand travels back to the sacrum. Close the energy circuit in the body and make the bind. Expand that bow once you find it. Oh, this side's going so much better for me. I think it's just really about integrating what I learned on the first side into the second side. And also perhaps shortening the stance of the dog a little bit. So it's not too long and you're not too spread thin. Keep the collarbones wide. Inner right thigh back. Hips on the clock. Give it one more shot. And rest. That is one of those um, feels way harder than it looks postures. <laughs> I'm sure it looks challenging as well, but you know what I mean, those of you who did it. Okay, take a seat. If you have something to prop up your hips, prop them up. Just allow yourself to sit and breathe for a few to rhythmic breath, apart from our little moments of short spurts of air out through the nose, you've been engaging this oceanic breath the whole class. So let that soothe your system here and now after you just definitely amped up a good amount of adrenaline. All right, bring your knees in. Options. Send your left leg long and take just your right knee over for half of the cow face. And again, use your hands to inner rotate your top thigh. That will just really help um, cozy you in right where you need to be for the posture, all snug and naturally fitted. Or you can bring your bottom knee into the equation as well. For cow face pose, seated. So what tends to happen is that this right hip wants to pop up and off of its three o'clock position. So you're gonna plug it back and down. And then really activate the feet. Lift through the hearts. There's really lots of options from here. You know, you could stay upright like this. You could do the cow face arm variation. Or travel the arm behind you to bind it. Or you could take this more into a forward fold. Perhaps resting your forehead onto a prop. If you really want to get into those hips today, And we're nice and warm, so um, this will be very intense, but hopefully manageable for some of you. You know, elevate the outer edges of your feet up. And then tell your hips how much you love them. <laughs> Uh, 
lift underneath your tush, helping you to keep your weight, perch the top of your sits bones, and even going a little bit forward toward your pubic bone. Feet going out in opposite directions as your knees hug in toward one another. A few more deep breaths. Holy hell. <laughs> Inhale, rise, release. <sighs> Come neutral for a little moment before you switch sides. And then switch it out. You can choose a one legged version, a Kapadago Mukhasana or two legs. I've got my blocks in a little later. It's nice to first just get the form and then add the fancy extras. Once you know you're really in the archetype, you're gonna rotate the top thigh, plug that left hip back and down to its nine o'clock position and feel your feet activate. So you wanna feel the outer edges of the feet pressing downward. And then there's a little bit of a lift or um, a counter to any collapse in the outer ankles. So you can stay right here and you can add your arm if you want that little bit more of a focus for your, your tricep, your shoulders, your lats. Maybe you make the full bind. Or if you want to focus more in your hips, that lower part of your body, take it into the fold or do this craziness that I'm doing here. Crazy good. If you can get into it, it's crazy good. Crazy intense. So, you know, if we learn to, um, in our yoga practice, be able to cope with the moments of intensity, right? By using the breath, focus of the mind, positive affirmations honoring boundaries. When we get good at doing that in our yoga practice, it's going to spill over into life and we're going to get a lot better doing that off the mat as well. We know that this time we've all been in has been really rather intense. So I'm sure you're all feeling that your practice has been a lifeline to helping you stay grounded and sane and connected. That's the real magic of it. So a few more rounds of breath. However intense it is, maintain the flow of your breath. Take your time to come up and out. Feel the difference in the hips. Inhale, send the arms up. Soften the knees enough that you can feel you have a right angle at your hip joints. Your back is nice and long. 
exhale, fold over your legs. And take an extra inhale to lengthen, open the heart. Exhale, the fold. And if you have more space to reach, you can always use a block two blocks, the soles of your feet, and then hold on to that as you bow in. Inhale, lengthen forward, rise up, come to a seat. Why don't you go ahead and take your um, more unusual leg in front, the one you don't habitually go to very often. Inhale, reach the arms up. Remember when I told you to remember which form was in front for this uh, window frame? Go to that other side. Elbows into the center of the palms, lift it up. Open the windows of your house, just a little final ventilation. Final release of heat. As you prep to come down onto the cool earth. Rest your body. Two more breaths. 